seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Four. We're creating boss monsters today. And I actually want this video to be about the whole process of concept to animation and how we're gonna solve that to implementation. So let me show you the work that's already been done. Alrighty, I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly. So here at the top is our notes for each setting. Below is a piece of concept art of how a level in that setting should look. And here on the right is the boss monster concept. For setting one, you already know the slime from previous videos. So uh, let's move on to setting two, the dark forest. The following boss sketches were all made by our level designer Danny, so credit where credit is due. Yeah, so for setting two we wanted a poison froggo with its tongue wrapping around the whole level. The difficulty here will be the wrap as well as making the frog stand out from the green forest floor, so we're probably going to change the colors on that. Setting 3 is going to be fairly dark, nighttime with ruins, and the end boss was supposed to be a snake. But because the snake didn't really work out with our feeding animations, we instead opted for these little stonelings, and I love them so much, and I can't wait to do like my take on them. Setting 4 was going to be a swamp, but now, after some development time, it's more of a tropical river land? We still want to keep our octopus, but maybe I'm going to adjust the color so it fits better within its new environment. For the autumn forest, I just wanted an angry pumpkin. Yes, I'm very creative. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Lastly, setting six is the problem child. For a long time, our setting was just mountain and our boss idea was some cute Cthulhu-like thing. Um, Danny came up with the idea of a bird, which we also really liked, but then again, the boss monster shape is kind of awkward and this tropical bird doesn't really fit the snow mountain that we're gonna have. So uh, yeah, this one is gonna be tricky. Um, I'm gonna take some time to do some reference gathering and then let's do some sketching. Gathering references is actually one of the most important parts of starting any design. And it's the part I most often skip because I have my own ideas and I just want to draw what's in my head. But just grounding your design in something real can make it so much more believable. And also gathering references can give you so many new ideas. For example, when I was looking at pumpkin images, I saw how cool their vines looked and came up with the idea to use the vines and leaves as arms. Okay, so I think I have all of my references for the forest poison froggo. So I searched for ones that were specifically in like median climate forest. So I found these two, um, which just have like amazing color and like the mushroom pattern. And then I also just as a reference found a picture of a toad. I think just the toad shape will make more sense for the boss. I found out that Oct Octopus, octopi, that they pretty much live all over the world. Um, so they can be found in most climates. So I just searched up for some tropical ones and I really like these colors on that one with the blue and this pattern is just really, really cool. Pumpkin. For the pumpkin, I actually just found a really good picture of a pumpkin and then just some, some faces because I think it could be fun to like reference the Halloween faces. And then I also wanted to take a look at what the vines and the leaves look like. And then lastly, this is probably my favorite. So I found out that most birds that live in the snow have these really tiny beaks and are basically just balls of fluff to stay warm, which kind of makes sense. But like these mostly live on the ground. Um, and I found this guy, which apparently he lives in the Alps. I think if I can, I just want to make like a huge fluff ball with a tiny beak and just have him look like angry. I love birds.
everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation Alrighty, uh, it's the afternoon now and I've done some sketching Let us take a quick look at it The poison froggo, I came up with the idea for this like weird ass tongue um, Which I really like So I think if I move some like parts around and like clean it up in Photoshop That this one will turn out really well Next up, these guys I found a, a design which I really like, um, which is really close to um, what our level designer originally intended. I, I like the facial expression and I also like that they have um, these little Lego brick parts, so maybe they are like parts of them are connected and that's how they kind of form the snake. So um, that's what I'm thinking and I need to see how that looks if I actually make all of these in like this level of detail. Next up, um, I'm not happy <laughs> with this one, <laughs> neither with this one um, and I think like this one just works the best because it's like the traditional octopus. I'm probably gonna do a mix of like maybe this body and then the cute face. Yeah, pumpkin just I'm gonna take a photo and put it in Photoshop and just make it like that because I love this little guy. <laughs> then lastly, let's go to the burbs. Um, the bird has kind of an awkward shape. Originally our designer had intended them to be leaf space for the beaks. When I was doing like just the blue line sketch for this one, I didn't like it at all. Mainly because there's so much empty space up here. Uh, so I moved on to like just trying to... <laughs> this one kind of had the vibe that I wanted in terms of like anger but it also just looks like it's ready to shit all over your balcony so yeah even though that's something I'm very familiar with at the moment uh, that that's not what I want for the final boss of the game so I did a third attempt <laughs> I did these three and then I kind of went back to this one and did a paint over with pencil and I really like the pencil drawing as well. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna take a break for today um, because it always helps, helps me if I sleep on it for one night and then if I look at them tomorrow and I still really like them, um, I'm gonna take some photos, put them into Photoshop and um, finish these up. So uh, see you tomorrow. I just took some photos of the boss monster drawings that I did yesterday. Um, I still really like them, so that's a really good sign. I'm still very unsure about the bird boss. Um, I'm probably gonna upload the photos that I just took to Photoshop um, and then we can just throw some color on there and just see how they work within their levels and with the background. Let's get some breakfast and some coffee first and I think that's gonna help a lot. What is this? Joseph already made coffee. After breakfast I started out with a froggo boss. I layered a grid behind it and resized it accordingly. Then I jump into color. The colors I'm using are not final, but just an approximation of what I think might look good. I mainly use them to draw the different body parts, and coloring them in different hues helps me see the overall shapes better. My goal here is to replace the line work, so I can see if the frogger looks good in our game's art style, which is very flat and has no outlines. Once I'm happy with the individual shapes, I go over the frogger with the colors that are much more close to the final ones. Next up, the octopus concept. I merged the head and body from two of my favorite sketches and resized the graphic to the 2x2 grid. 
To mask out the individual body shapes, you can see me using a lot of clashing colors because the octopus has a lot of overlap plus a very complex pattern and this just helps me see what part goes where. After I'm happy with the shapes, I put up the tile set next to the boss and use some of the orange and pink from the plants to tie the boss and setting together. The stonelings are pretty much made using all the same techniques I've already talked about for the previous bosses, only here I'm using colors that are close to final because I already have a set color palettes that I want to use. My main goal here is for this boss to not look too cluttered, so I reduce the detail quite a bit compared to my original sketch. Lastly, I work on the pumpkin. By that point, I had gotten really good at translating the sketches into designs, so I just laid down some color, added shadow, added some lines to showcase the volume, and then lastly added the vines and leaves without doing like too many tweaks and changes. It is Monday today and today I'm gonna have a call with my friend Diana and yeah, tell her what we need for the bosses. Because she's very talented at sketching expressions, I just wanted to do one sketch per animation. I said this in a previous video, but let me quickly explain what I mean by expressions. In our game, every monster has four states that it can be in. First, the idol, where it's hungry, then the receives food, where its mouth is open, then a chewing animation, and then a happy animation. For each of those four, we will need a key pose that we can then animate around. And Diana was kind enough to sketch those key poses for us. Thank you, Diana! Yeah, so that's kind of it. That's the next step for the bosses. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna keep you up to date and also show you the sketches that we get back. So I'm making food right now, but I need to record my reaction now because otherwise I'm gonna forget. Oh, my timer just went off um, here cooking with this little stove because we don't have a kitchen yet. Um, anyway, Diana just sent me the sketches for the boss animation and they look so cool. I've just seen them on my phone. Um, I'm gonna finish my food now and then I'm gonna take a look at them um, on the PC, but uh, yeah, then I, I need to design the, the final boss um, so she can do sketches for that as well. Um, hype! Inspired by Diana's drawings, I finally sat down to draw the final boss, which was the bird. The first thing that I wanted to try out was take the somewhat tropical design that I had made and change it so it would fit the mountain setting, just so we would have that as one of the options. The other two designs that I had for my sketches were much closer in tone to what we wanted, but they had very awkward shapes. So I tried sketching them on the grid to see if they would fill out the whole thing. For the third sketch, I even added a nest just so it would fit the grid better. And of course, the third one got the grumpy little expression. When I was done, we were left with these three and I showed them to Joseph to get a second opinion. We ultimately decided to go with A, but take the horns from B since they filled out the shape much better. So I started combining those two and then going through the same process as I had done with the other boss monsters. Filling out the shapes with some random colors, then tweaking them, and then doing the actual color pass. And after I was done, this was the result. And I was not happy with it. 
And I think this might be a really cool opportunity to show the thought process of what happens if you are the designer, but also the art director. <laughs> what I like about this one is the face. It has high contrast and also the stripes read as part of the body because they both share the same color. However, the wing tips down here that are orange and also the orange feet, from further away, they look like they're part of the nest. And then also I'm worried because in the mountain setting, in the background, we're gonna have like dark spikes and dark rocks and maybe meteorites. And I really want the bird to stand out. And since the blue was kind of the biggest issue on this design, I read it the color palette, um, I read it some of the shapes, and I did them in a very neutral gray tone at first that I then translated into more of a beige and then brought in some of those browns and yellows. I also changed the color of the feet to be more red-orange versus a yellow-orange, just so they would be further away from the color of the nest, if that makes sense. All right, it is one week later. My friend Diana has made some amazing sketches. She did these really nice sheets with all of the boss monsters in the correct sizes. And then she also did a two frame mock-up for the two animations. The, like the work she did is just amazing. And I am so glad that we involved her in this. The plan for today is to put them all in one file that Joseph can then use to build the assets in Affinity Designer and he's gonna build them in layers so that later I can take the layers, put them in After Effects and then animate the bosses. Um, I decided to start with the pumpkin because that's the boss I love the most <laughs> um, and I think it'll also be the easiest to get right and give me like a little confidence boost. My first attempt was done in Premiere because that's a program I am very comfortable with. I made a super simple, really slow idle animation by just moving and rotating the individual layers. Then I made the whole animation into a sequence so I could stretch and squash the whole pumpkin. Afterwards, I speed up the whole thing to get the final animation. So for the chewing pose, I gave the body just a basic bounce and then spent way too long trying to have the leaves and vines match that movement. After giving it the same stretch and squash as the idle, the chewing animation was done as well. Getting food was just more of the same. And then lastly for the happy animation, for the stretch and squash at the end, I added a little rotation so it looks like the pumpkin is rolling from side to side happily. Feeling confident now, I revisited the idle animation copied the whole movement, but then swapped out the face every couple of frames for a different facial expression. Since the idol is on screen the longest, this animation should be the most interesting. And with that, the pumpkin was done. On this rainy day was the perfect time to start working on the frog. Since the assets I get from Joseph are just masks of the different body parts, I have to go in and add details and gradients before I can start animating. Joseph could have probably done this as well, but since I know exactly how I want the details to look, it's more efficient if I do it. I also have to go through all of the layers, merge them and name them so I can easily find them again later. It's been raining most of today and this whole week wasn't really very productive. I ran into some issues when saving out the boss monsters um, and the main one is that when they're animated they don't really fit their collider boxes very well and because we're using like the sprite's actual collision 
Um, and there's no way in Game Maker to just draw a box. Like, there, there's just like a rectangle, a diamond shape, a round shape, um, but there's no way to add more points and like have it be a Tetris shape, for example. And because we're using the sprite as the collision, um, that's gonna obviously cause bugs. So um, we will probably need to change the logic for the boss monsters. So today um, I just saved out all of the graphics without tidying them up um, and just put them in the engine. So maybe next week our programmer Yuzia can take a look at them and we can figure out how to solve this collider issue. Good morning. I finished a lot of things last week that were keeping me from doing the boss monsters. Today I almost have nothing else planned, so I thought I'm gonna show these in mean, these little boss homes. They're so cute. What I did not yet know was that this day was about to get very chaotic, so uh, let's cut to three hours later. I mainly worked on the uh, Arabic translation for Dogs Organize Neatly and I pretty much just worked on Dogs Organize Neatly this whole day. At first I wanted to leave the segment out because it's not really part of the Boss Monster workflow and I wanted to do a really focused video on just one feature. But I think it's important to show that if you have more than one game that you're working on, there is rarely any days where you just work on one feature. For us, there's often days where we need to take a look at cats organized neatly or dogs organized neatly or virtual cottage and add things to do those games or do customer support. And we're also doing tests and builds for other consoles for those games on the side. So it's still like always multiple parts that we have to juggle. It's the next day and I have nothing else planned for today but work on the boss monsters. <laughs> I'll start by animating the ones that I already have. I think the octopus should be fairly straightforward. Let's start! Because there is a lot of layering going on with the tentacles and the face, I need to figure out in what order to save out the file. It's not gonna stay in this area with the other one. Um, so I'm probably gonna keep it separate and I'm just gonna have to move it by hand. <laughs> To start off, I cleaned up, merged and renamed all the layers for all of the four octopus files. Then I jump into After Effects for the first time. I imported my layers and went straight for the puppet tool. With this tool, I can set individual points on the graphic, which are used as anchors. If I then move those points, they will deform the mesh accordingly. It took me a while to figure out where to position the points and how much I could move them so it would still look good and not break my graphic. And I had never done this type of movement and jumping in without understanding the motion was probably not a good idea. I was struggling so much with just moving one tentacle and after two hours of just moving points around without getting anywhere, I needed to make a plan. I brought out some spare paper and started drawing the movement that I wanted, one pose at a time. Then I made a mock-up of the five key poses in Photoshop and added shapes till it vaguely resembled a tentacle. <laughs> So I went through the After Effects animation and posed the model like it was on my first drawing. Then I set a second keyframe and posed that like the second drawing and so on. Warum kann ich nicht verstehen, wie der Tentakel sich bewegt? Google mal animating tentacle oder so. I hope I can explain the solution that I managed to find. Let's try. 
To start off, I added three anchor points at the base and then three more for the rest of the limb. I start out with just one point and I plan to add five keyframes to that part of the limb. The first keyframe is gonna be all the way to the left, then one in the middle, then to the right, then back to the middle and back to the left to create a loop. Then I copy that movement of right, middle, left, middle, right to all of the other parts of the tentacle so they move in unison. This still doesn't look very good, but here comes the part that I finally figured out. I grab all of the keyframes and offset them by one. And to loop this whole thing again, I just copy the now last keyframe and make it the first. Then I copy that again, offset it by one, copy the last keyframe, put it to the front. And I just do that for all of the points and I'm so happy to report that it works. This took forever. <laughs> I think two and a half hours and multiple sketches of trying to understand how tentacles move and one very questionable Google search. Um, I finally figured it out. My problem was that I was trying to stick to this type of logic, which is how you'd animate a flag, which I have done for the airship for the game recently. What I was not understanding is, yeah, the movement is technically correct, but since I want the tentacle to move differently at the top than at the bottom, I need a delay because otherwise, like, the movement was just like this and not like <laughs> Anyway, it still doesn't look as good as I wanted to, but I think because I'm gonna reduce the frame rate a lot, if there is rough patches, I can fix it in Photoshop. Now I can animate one of these tentacles fairly quickly. So that is 12, that is 18, that is 18 tentacles. <laughs> I have three. I think it's pretty much the same on every octopus. So um, yeah, you're just gonna get a bunch of screen recordings. I finished up the get food animation and added the stretch and squash in Premiere and it worked. And the first octopus is done. Only three more to go. For the chewing animation, I started with the mouth, then the head, and then animated the limbs with my newfound knowledge. And once done, I added my stretch and squash to the animation and realized that my canvas was too small. Okay, let's fix that. Still close to the edge, but this should work. A happy animation was just more of the same, animating the head, then the limbs, then stretch and squash. You know how this goes by now. Lastly, I did the eye animation, which was just sad. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. But hey, look, now all of them are done. Yeah! Good morning. It's the next day. I finished the octopus yesterday. I think today I'm gonna attempt to do the frog, which should hopefully be faster than the octopus. Um, and I'm also gonna upload one of the collision shapes because Yuzia will be trying to get that running this week while I'm still animating. Oh yeah, we also talked about the monsters that have multiple parts, like the frog is like the frog body and then it has the tongue at the top. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna stop you there past Simone because we scrapped this idea, it wasn't looking good and it created way more confusion than gameplay value. So uh, let's move on. Alrighty, so the frog is technically finished in terms of asset creation. Um, and I also think the movement is gonna be a lot simpler, minus the tongue. But since I have a lot of practice animating tentacles now, <laughs> I can use that for the tongue. What I usually try and do is minimize the amount of layers that I have. Um, so for example, I don't have the right foot and the left foot, I just merge them to one layer that is called feet. <laughs> Watch all of the animators watching this cringe. But one thing that I kind of want to test for the froggo, because maybe we're gonna have a second part of the tongue coming in from the top of the screen. 
So I kind of want the tongue to be its own character. So because it has these little like divots and the little bubbles, I'm going to save those out as individual parts. So maybe I can scale them or like rotate them to kind of give it some movement. So uh, yeah, let's try and animate the first Frogo frame, which is the two animation. Um, and if it looks good, then I'll just continue. And if it doesn't, I'll merge a bunch of stuff and make it easier for myself. Let's go! So I threw my little froggy boy into After Effects and started animating the biggest shape first, the body. Then I move on to the face, arms and legs because they're attached to the body. For these I just copy the body movement and then tweak it so they read as individual parts. The cheeks gave me a little bit of trouble for some reason because I wanted them to move with an offset to make them seem like they were like jiggly. And after some back and forth and trying out a few things, I got it looking okay. On to the tongue. At first I tried animating it with only the puppet tool, which worked, but it wasn't looking that great. Then I had a really cool idea. I copied the movement of the body onto the tongue so it would move at the same speed and like just have that little bounce that the body already had. And then on top of that, I would do the same workflow as I had done to the octopus limbs to just add that additional bounce and additional movement. And I really like the end result. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a pain adding the other things. Oh, let's see, maybe I can just copy over the grid thingy. That would be amazing. Next up, the tongue details. These indents were actually super easy to add. The bubbles behind the tongue, however, uh, were causing some problems. I really like where the frogo has ended up. Um, the, those little bubbles behind the tongue, there wasn't really any need for keeping them separately. Like it just broke the art asset. So now the tongue is merged um, and I think it looks much better because it's just one unit. Um, to wrap up the animation, I scaled and rotated the little indents to make them look more 3D. The little dents. Um, I got them to scale and I think it looks really cool. Um, I know which ones to merge now and I also know how to animate the tongue now. Armed with this knowledge, um, I'm just gonna sit down for two hours now and animate the rest of them. Um, it's the afternoon now. I'm very happy with my progress. I pretty much finished all of the frogs in After Effects. So right now what I've done is implement them in Premiere and I'm basically just gonna add the last uh, stretch and squash in Premiere. I've also um, enlarged the comp and um, just giving it a few pixels at the top and at the bottom so that like the frog has some room to just be stretched a bit more. So hooray, second boss, pretty much done, I think. And now we move on to the stone links. Since I only had three facial expressions for one of these little guys, I first needed to make three more and draw the missing expressions for each. There is two more bosses remaining and those are the two hard ones. At first I wanted to do the bird slash chicken boss, but then I found inspiration for the stone ruin. I don't even have a name for them yet. Ta-da! They always do like a little motion and then they stand still for a couple of frames and then they do another motion. And I think if I animate four of the little stone creatures and all of the movements kind of have like a delay so they're not moving in unison but it's like clack 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 maybe that can look cool i don't know i don't really plan these things i just open the file and push buttons so let's open up the file and push some buttons 
I start out by giving all of the four stone creatures different shades of grey, just so they don't read as one uniform blob, but as individual parts. I also add small details like cracks and some shading, since these were looking a bit plain. For all of the other bosses, I had a different drawing for each key pose. The pumpkin had different leaves, for example, for each and every pose. But the stone creatures, they all have the same body, like there is no different poses. So what I plan to do is just try and get that body to move in different ways based on the expressions. And now comes the part that I'm actually really proud of. I wanted to animate the first stoneling and then just swap out the assets to copy the animation onto the second stoneling. In order for that to work, I draw the missing limbs in red, so all of them have the same parts. Everyone has like two arms, two legs. This will make copying the whole animation possible. The red limbs I will later just delete so they look like they're supposed to. With my reference off to the side, I start the process of animating the first stoneling. The main distinction between these four animations is going to be the movement of the body, so it's essential that I get this one right. I start by just rotating the body on its axis. Uh, no. Let's try that again. Eh, too stiff and still too fast, so let's tweak that a little. Yeah, getting better. Now we just need to add that little shake at the end so it feels less rigid. Yes, I like this. Now it's time to add the legs. And yes, again, I'm animating both so I can copy this animation onto other stone links later. Then I work on the head and the arms and this is how it looks. Before I start detailing, I want to make a second animation to see if I can make it distinct enough from the first one with this limited amount of assets. I'm so happy with these. Then it was time to see if my asset swap plan would work. And it did, which was amazing news for me. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. I know this still looks kind of broken because I didn't name things correctly, but the base idea worked. Before saving this one out, I of course removed the red limb and then imported both stonelings into Premiere. I am so happy right now. Um, my stupid plan of making the animations first and then swapping out the parts worked. Ah, I'm hoping to, I think I have like one or two hours left. Pigeons! Sorry, what was I saying? Um, I plan on finishing the last two animations. I'm gonna do the chewing and get food. Yeah, those are the two missing. And they should be fairly short, so I'm very confident that I can do them. I might not film to keep the reveal a secret. I don't know. Like, I already put two of the characters next to one another and it already looks so cool. Uh, but I can't wait for it to be all eight in a row and like dancing and ah. So I finished the last two animations and then copied those animations onto the other stone links, then exported all of them out into individual clips. Then I brought all four stone links into Premiere and layered them with some overlap. Just having these play at the same time is already so cool and I think it looks even cooler with a little offset. And yes, I was not gonna show these but I think they just turned out so great, so I wanted to show this little in-game clip. The last step for all of these bosses was to export them as PNG sequences, which is super easy to do in Premiere. 
I can then import those PNGs into Game Maker and see the bosses in the level for the first time. Nice, so da ist so. Jetzt noch eine Wolke drüber. Uh, okay, das sieht schon cool aus. Nice. It is Friday now. Um, I haven't really recorded this whole week because Wednesday we got our kitchen. Um, and then we also had to do a bunch of other like home repairs, home improvement shit, whatever. I'm like right after I'm vlogging this, um, I'm going to the hardware store again. <laughs> uh, yesterday evening I finished the bird graphics. So I took all the bird graphics, I colored them, I saved them out and I have the After Effects project done now. Um, I also started doing a little idle animation <laughs> and just having the bird like wobble around and I really like what I have as a base animation. Hopefully I can get that done this afternoon. And yeah, then the bosses are complete. Um, the bosses are finally done and every one except the chicken bird is implemented now. Um, um, I gave each of the animations because they were very static. Um, I squished and stretched them a bit more. So yeah, I think as like an outro I'm gonna show you how the boss intro sequence, how that'll turn out. Um, yeah, and I think then that's it. Um, yeah, I hope you check out the final game and see the bosses in action and uh, yeah, see you in the next devlog. I don't know what I'm gonna tackle next. Currently, once you enter the boss level, this, this little tune plays. Uh, we have one for each boss and the boss comes into frame and the name is shown and then the boss level starts. So we just wanted this to kind of highlight the bosses a bit more. The plan having like these anime stripes coming, um, having black bars coming from the outside to make it like cinematic format and then just having um, a little backdrop and maybe even darkening the background. To make this boss intro, we used Game Maker's sequences, which some of you also suggested in the comments of one of my videos, uh, so thank you so much for that. Working with it was almost like using a video editing program, and in a fairly short amount of time I had something that I was super happy with. <laughs> it works. Transferring this sequence onto the other bosses was no problem. Except for the burp. <laughs> he too big. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this more focused sort of video where I just go over one part of making the game. And also, if you are interested in Feed All Monsters, please go on Steam and leave us a wishlist. Um, it really helps out a ton. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.